Contact sensors can be a great addition to any smart home, but which brand is the best? Today we'll be comparing five different brands and looking at all the features that each of them offer for your smart home. Then stress testing them by opening and closing them 100 times to see which one is the fastest to trigger an alert and is the most accurate with the number of alerts. And you're gonna wanna stick around to the stress test because something happened with one of these sensors that I was not expecting. But first, let's look at all the devices that we will be stress testing. Starting off with the Onvis CS1. Onvis sent this out to me for the video and it's definitely larger than other HomeKit contact sensors. And although it's not one of the best looking sensors when compared to other brands, it is a very affordable option and actually has more features than some of the expensive brands that we'll be looking at later on the video. It's a four in one sensor with four different attributes exposed in the home app. There's a contact sensor, a humidity and temperature sensor, and there's a security system exposed and you can switch between different modes. The Onvis icon is displayed as the icon of your contact sensor and it groups all the attributes together. There's not a button to separate them like there is for the Akara M1S hub. There's a built-in speaker on the front of the device for an alarm that's up to 120 decibels that would definitely get somebody's attention. And the Onvis CS1 is the only HomeKit contact sensor that has a built-in alarm to the sensor. There is also a physical button on the front of the sensor if you wanted to manually change the modes. A singer press will quickly change the modes, a double press will switch modes after a few seconds, and a triple press will adjust volume levels. In the Onvis app, you can configure each mode and what happens when the sensor is opened in a specific mode, delay arming, and set the tone that the sensor makes when it's triggered. The Onvis CS1 also has support for critical alerts, which will override any do not disturb and silent settings to audibly alert you that the alarm has been triggered. This is surprising to see on a very affordable contact sensor that does not require a hub. When the sensor is in disarm mode, you can have the sensor make a sound each time that the door is opened. There's also an open door reminder feature that will remind you that the door has been left open for two minutes or longer. However, it won't send you a push notification that the door has been left open. The sensor will keep making a sound until you close the door or the time has ended. With two AAA batteries, this sensor will last for about one and a half years battery life, slightly shorter than most other brands. And the box includes extra adhesives and mounting screws. And the adhesive is very strong. I took the sensor on and off the wall and it was still strong each time. The biggest drawback to this contact sensor is that it connects to your HomeKit hub via Bluetooth 5.0, which has led to some of the issues that I've had with this sensor. There's limited range from your HomeKit hub, so this could be an issue if your hub is far away from your sensor. And open and close Resorts aren't going to be as fast when compared to something like the Eve sensor that works over thread or the Akara sensor that works via Zigbee, both of which have much faster alerts and longer range. And in the home app, the CS1 would sometimes take a while to change the status of the system. It would say arming for a couple of seconds before switching modes, or it would try to arm and drop connection, get stuck, and go back to off. Whereas compared to the Akara M1S hub, which is instantaneous when you're switching between the different modes, since it's a the faster connection of Zigbee. Also, the Onvis app does glitch out sometimes and will give me an error when trying to update the settings or will take a while to update. The Onvis CS1 is a great budget option for a contact sensor and although it supports Bluetooth 5.0, it still has some great features like a dedicated alarm that could be useful in your smart home. Though what is not a great option is our next contact sensor brand, Fabaro. The second largest contact sensor in this video and is one of the most expensive contact sensors in this list. But Fabaro has less features and costs more than EVE and the very reliable Akara. The Fabaro contact sensor connects over Bluetooth like Onvis, which means limited range and slow open and close alerts. There is a blue LED light when the sensor is open or closed and can be turned off in the Fabaro app, which is basic and kind of hard to use and does not show as much data as other contact sensors do. In the home app, there's a temperature and humidity sensor exposed. There's also a tampered sensor exposed to HomeKit to alert you if the the sensor is being taken off the wall, but I could not get this to work. I jiggled the sensor around to act like I was trying to take it off the wall, and the home app eventually said that there was an active status, and I was able to get the sensor off the wall, and the tamper status never changed. It has a rather big DC battery that's rated for up to two years. It's actually the same battery that the EVE sensor uses as well. It's a little difficult to replace the battery, and I kept taking the sensor off the wall trying to replace the battery, which was not good for the adhesive. You don't get any extra adhesives or mounting screws for the 
the high price, which is frustrating since their adhesive is weak and does not work very well. I took the sensor off the wall just a couple of times and now it will barely stick to the wall. Since Onvis and Fabaro work over Bluetooth and have the slowest connection types, this has me worried how they will do in the second part of the stress test. Now I move to the most expensive contact sensor in this list, the Ecobee Smart Sensor, which only comes in a pack of two. It has the fanciest packaging for a contact sensor, a clean looking design, and a smooth finish. And on the bottom of the sensor, you'll see a white circle. Ecobee has built in a feature that no other HomeKit contact sensor has, and that's a 120 degree motion sensor, also used as an occupancy sensor. Now, if you're not sure what the difference between a motion and occupancy sensor is, here is a great example with controlling lights. The motion sensor will detect all movement in our room, so objects, people, and pets. And if you're in the room but not moving, then the sensor will say that there's no motion, which could turn off your lights, even though you're still in the room. Whereas an occupancy sensor will detect for people and pets specifically. So if there's somebody in, in the room, say like watching TV and not moving, even though there's no motion, your lights would stay on and then turn off after you have physically left the room. You'll need to have an Ecobee thermostat or Ecobee smart camera for the contact sensor to work in HomeKit, as the thermostat will pair to the smart sensor and will expose all the attributes in the home app. The contact sensor talks to your thermostat via a 915 megahertz radio wave and not Wi-Fi, which essentially means that it's faster than Bluetooth, but not quite as fast as Thread or Zigbee. The Ecobee app is very basic since all the features are in the home app and will not alert you if a sensor has been opened or closed for a certain number of time. And the box does not include any extra adhesives or mounting screws. The adhesive is decent. It will lose its stickiness if you take it on off a door multiple times, though it's not as bad as Fabaro. It has a thick battery that will last up to three years and it's very easy to replace. Ecobee has a new feature that will turn off the AC when a door or window is left open for five minutes and turn back on when it's closed for 30 seconds to help you save energy and money. However, this feature is only available if you have a smart security subscription. Next up is the Eve door and window sensor, one of the best HomeKit contact sensors on the market. It's about as big as the Ecobee sensor. It has a large DC battery that's the same as Fabaro and it's rated for up to two years of usage. It's also fairly easy to replace the battery by sliding the cover off and then back on after you replace the battery. You don't get any extra adhesive for the sensors and the included adhesive is not that durable. It's going to be fine for sticking on a door or window once, but if you want to move it to different doors, then you will run into an issue. I moved it to different doors for testing and after a couple of times, the adhesive was starting to peel off of the sensor and would just barely be able to stick to a door. I would have liked to see extra adhesives in the box like with Onvis and with Akara. Now it makes Eve a great option for any HomeKit smart home is that it has the strongest privacy out of any other company. All the data is fully encrypted and is done locally through your HomeKit hub and only stays inside your home so nothing goes outside of your network. The Eve sensor also supports Thread which essentially creates its own mesh network between all of your Thread compatible devices and the more Thread devices you have the stronger your network will be. You will need a HomePod mini or the newest Apple TV 4K in order for Thread to work otherwise the connection will default to Bluetooth 5.0. If you want to know more about Thread and the technical side of how everything works, I will leave a link down in the description below that you can go and check out. Thread enables for one of the fastest alerts when something has been opened or closed. The Eve app shows a multitude of data from when it was last opened, if it's connected via Thread, and more. But it cannot alert you if a door has been opened or closed for X amount of time. In the box, you get spacers for the sensor. So if your door and door frame are not flush, then this allows your sensors to be flushed together for accurate readings. The Eve door and window sensor is a great option for HomeKit since it supports Thread, but I am honestly not a big fan of Thread. I've had a bunch of issues with Thread devices from different brands, either staying connected or being slow to respond, so I don't use any Thread devices in my smart home. And during the stress test, I experienced a major issue with Eve that I was not expecting. But before I show you that, let's look at the last brand that we'll be testing, which has been the most reliable for me, and that is Akara and their door and window sensor. Now, Akara is easy my favorite HomeKit brand out there. I'm not just saying that because they sent their door and window sensor for this video. I've spent my own money on their products because they are extremely reliable, very affordable, and work amazingly together with other Akara devices. Their door and window sensor is the smallest in this video and has a tiny battery rated for up to two years of usage. Though it is a little difficult to replace since you have to use a flathead to open it up from the bottom. And if you're not careful, then you'll accidentally take the sensor off the wall. But thankfully, the adhesive is very very strong.
strong and can be removed and reattached to a door or window with ease. And better yet, there is extra adhesives in the box. The contact sensor itself is the cheapest in this video. However, all Akar devices, which are called child devices, do require an Akar hub, which is called the parent. And what's unique about their hubs is that they're not just a box that sits in a closet or a shelf that doesn't do anything besides be a connection like some other hubs. Akara hubs add value to your smart home because they each have their own specific set of features so you can find one that best suits your needs. All the hubs talk to the child devices via Zigbee 3.0, which is similar to Thread in the way that it has very fast alerts, it's rock solid, and is very energy efficient. It does not have an LED light or make a sound when it's open or closed, like other contact sensors do, which could be an issue if you need an audio or visual feedback when a door has been opened or closed. But since a car's devices work together, like the M1S hub, to play any of their ringtones or be any color that you like at any brightness when a door is open. And Akara is one of the few HomeKit brands that can alert you if a door has been open or closed for a certain number of minutes. And the M1S hub could be used again to display a certain color or play a sound to get the visual and audio feedback. Now that we know the difference between each of these devices, let's see what happens when you open and close them 100 times. I've put a HomeKit hub nearby so the Bluetooth devices like Onvis and Fabaro can have a strong signal and Eve can use Thread. And in a car hub, which is the G2H camera for a car to have a strong connection as well and an Ecobee thermostat in the next room nearby. After removing the adhesives on all the sensors, sticking them to the door and verifying the all display open and close alerts in the hall map, we are now ready to stress test these devices. Or so I thought. This is where the Eve sensor gave me the biggest issues. The Eve sensors kept saying that the door was opened even though the door was closed. The light would flash indicating that it was open or closed but the status did, did not change in the home or the Eve app. I made sure the Eve's firmware and the HomePod's firmware was up to date, removed the battery and tried it again, but it still did not work. Then after multiple times of restarting my internet and my HomeKit hub, everything was finally working right. Now that Eve was fixed, it's finally time to start the stress test. After I opened and closed the door 10 times, I started to notice a common theme. Akara was the first one to display an alert, followed quickly by Eve, then Ecobee. And Onvis and Fabara were the slowest with alerts. On the 17th time that I opened and closed the door, Eve started to act up again and saying that the sensor was opened when it was actually closed. Thankfully, this was a quick fix by just removing the battery and putting it back and we were good to go. After about 40 times of opening and closing the door, Onvis and Fabaro started to have massive delays showing when it was opened or closed, often taking up to five seconds or longer to update. And for the last 30 times, I decided to speed things up a bit by opening and closing the door very fast just to see what they would do. I did not wait for the devices to update in the home app, I just opened and closed the door fast just to see what they would do. After quickly opening and closing the door 30 times, the first thing you'll see is just how fast Akara, Eve, and Ecobee are with response times and how slow Bluetooth is with Onvis and Fabaro. In fact, Onvis was six alerts in before Fabaro had its first alert. Though about halfway into this test, Onvis started to have long delays with alerts and Fabaro came back to have more alerts than Onvis, though they were both behind the actual amount. Akara and Eve finished with 100% accuracy. Ecobee was not far behind with being off by five. Fabaro was a bit more behind with being off by seven. And Onvis was the least accurate with being off by almost 10. And this last test goes to show that Zigbee and Thread are way faster than Bluetooth. So if you're looking for a HomeKit contact sensor, which brand should you buy? Akara is my favorite for reliability and gonna be great if you have other car devices. Eve is a good choice if you have a HomePod or Apple TV as it supports Thread. Onvis is a good budget option and the security system with a very loud alarm is awesome to have. Ecobee is helpful if you want a HomeKit occupancy sensor and Fabaro has a temperature sensor but the hefty price tag and lack of features makes it hard to recommend. Let me know which contact sensor brand is your favorite down in the comments below. Here are some more videos that you would like and thank you for watching.